These days, he is recognized all over the world, not just as a football player, but as an enduring sporting legend. Pele's amazing exploits on the soccer pitch earned him the nickname The King and secured his status as a living icon in his native country of Brazil. His full name of Edson Arantes do Nascimento was shortened to Pelé during his school days. Because he kept mispronouncing the name of his favorite player, Bile. I fight in college with the, the kids because no, my name is Edson, they call me Pelé. I got two days suspended in the school. Then everybody in school, all the kids start to call me Pelé. I hate that time. <laughs> Today I love, of course. Now I love because uh, I don't know. God gave it to me short name, easy to pronounce it. Any language you can remember, Pele. Because uh, my name is Edson Arantes do Nascimento. This is hard to remember, no? Oh, name. <laughs> And then, uh, today I love Pelé. He was born in 1940 in Tres Caracos in Brazil. He grew up in poverty in Sao Paulo. As a youngster, he served in tea shops to earn extra money. But before long, his talent was recognized by manager Waldemar de Brito, who took him to Santos Football Club for a tryout and told directors he would be the greatest football player in the world. Pelé made his debut for Santos in 1956. By the next season, he was given a starting place in the first team and became the league's top scorer at the age of just 16. He continued to amaze fans with his unrivaled ability as a forward, racking up an incredible tally of 66 goals in one season. I had a lot of foundation, Real Madrid. I also, I also had a... I had at that time, I was invited to be, um, uh, how to say, shareholder from the, the Fiat, you know, to come to play in Italy. And then I didn't, I didn't, at that time, I didn't understand well uh, the business situation. I said, no, no. I, I, t I told to Mr. Agnelli, no, 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 I'm going to stay in Santos. I didn't want to come. During his career at Santos, he scored 589 goals from 605 appearances over 19 seasons at the club. One of his greatest highlights came in 1969, when he scored his 1,000th career goal. He dedicated it to the poor children of Brazil. But Pelé's most glorious moments were played out in the international arena. During his first international match in 1957, he scored Brazil's only goal in a 2-1 defeat against Argentina. Aged just 16 years and nine months, he became the youngest player to score in international football. He played his first World Cup just a few months later. In the final, the first of his two goals was selected as one of the best goals in the history of the World Cup. Brazil easily won the final, and Pelé had fulfilled his promise to his father to win a World Cup. He injured himself early in the 1962 World Cup and was unavailable for the rest of the tournament. Although Brazil won the cup again, Pelé missed out on receiving a medal. After failing in 1966, Pelé lined up for Brazil again at the 1970 World Cup. They prevailed 1-0 in a spectacular game against England before eventually beating Italy in the final and giving Pelé his second World Cup medal. His third came in 2007, when FIFA retrospectively awarded him the record honor to acknowledge his participation in Brazil's victorious 1962 campaign. But back in 1970, his World Cup career was coming to an end. Olha, seguinte, eu acho que a gente deve saber quando parar, né? E eu dei I think one should know when to give up. Vida ao futebol brasileiro, à seleção brasileira, e entendi que agora, depois do tricampeonato, chegou a I've been in the Brazilian team for a very long time. I've just turned 30, and I would never make the World Cup in Munich in 1972. I think if I was on the field, I'd be taking the place of someone who could be doing well for himself. Pelé's international career lasted 15 seasons 
spawning 77 goals from 92 appearances. With Pele on the field, the Brazilian team racked up an incredible record of 67 wins, with just 14 draws and 11 losses. Four years after retiring from international football, Pelé reached another tough decision. At the age of 34, it was time to hang up his boots at his beloved Santos. After almost two decades of thrilling crowds across the globe, it looked like the career of a footballing legend was at an end. However, the following year, he was lured out of retirement by a lucrative offer to play for the New York Cosmos in the North American Soccer League. As well as the prospect of a fat paycheck, Pele was also tempted by the opportunity to spend time in an English-speaking country. That time I have opportunity to learn English, to, to give opportunity to my, my family, my sons, my daughter to study English. Then I moved to the United States because of those, you know, proposed, but not only because uh, Cosmo paid me a little bit more than Santos. Pele's transfer to the Cosmos immediately sparked interest in the sport in the United States. Though well past his prime, he was the league star attraction. In 1977, he ended his career with an exhibition match between the Cosmos and Santos, in which he played one half for each side. It was an emotional but contented farewell. Uh, you know, I feel very, very, very sorry because I love soccer. And, uh, it's uh, like a uh, part of my life I, I lost. But uh, uh, it's very important when you, you stop in good shape, when you can't stop in good shape. Um, of course, I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss a lot. And no doubt football would miss the player who made history at Santos and brought awareness of the so-called beautiful game to the US. The Brazilian prodigy's unmatched on-field talent earned him the title of the king of football. But Pelé's playing career marked merely the first stage in the creation of a legend. Since hanging up his boots, he has gone on to achieve just as much off the pitch as on. As well as taking on ambassadorial work, he has continued to serve the sport he loves in many capacities. As a worldwide ambassador for football, Pelé has been the guest of honor at countless functions and events and never misses an opportunity to extol the virtues of the world game. As you know, the football is you know, the way to put people together. And uh, today, the biggest family in the world is the family of football. FIFA has more associated than UNESCO, than the ONU. He has also been Minister for Sports in Brazil, where his opinion on the game is always held in high regard. He's especially proud to promote the game to the youth of the world. Well, I always defend the idea that Sport is the best thing to take the kids from the street, and then soccer is the big sport in the world. It is very cheap and it is for poor people. Everybody can be there. That, I think, is the message. Every place they have a youth tournament, they invite me and I stay there. It is a pleasure to me. Advocating football and sport in general to children the world over is a passion for Pelé. He hopes that introducing youngsters to the game will ignite a spark in them and keep them off the streets. In 1997, his extraordinary contribution to sport in the community won the admiration of the British government. They were so enamoured with Pelé's efforts, they decided to make him an honorary knight commander of the British Empire. 
there's no one like Pelé, and what a wonderful, what a wonderful gesture to make him an honorary KPE, the first time this has ever happened to a foreign footballer, and I think it's the sort of thing that everyone in this country will applaud. He has very close links uh, with this country, and it's great for us to recognise that and bind him ever closer to us. Another of Pelé's missions has been to help improve conditions in his home country. Coming from a poor family himself, he believes that youth support programs in Brazil are not what they should be and aims to encourage young kids to fulfill their dreams. I want to do the best for the sport in Brazil. My brother, they tease me, my brother, my friend, they say, oh, you are a king before, now you are a minister, now you <laughs> go back. <laughs> because uh, I think it's the time to, to do something. We have a you know, big potential in Brazil, but uh, the organization is not well. And we didn't have support for the, 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 the kids in Brazil. Then I want to try to change this uh, mentality. The only sports event that rivals the World Cup is the Olympics. And Pele was one of his country's ambassadors in Rio de Janeiro's bid to host the 2016 Games. He traveled to the Beijing Olympics in 2008 in an attempt to drum up support for the bid. It's not only for Rio, for Brazil, it's for all Latin America. And that is the reason it's important, because there is a large amount of young people who need to be inspired by sports. Also, it is important for the Olympic movement, because it's a new territory. We never had Olympics in South America. And for this reason, it is very important to have this first time in Rio de Janeiro. In late 2009, the International Olympic Committee announced that Rio's bid for the 2016 Summer Olympics from the 5th to the 21st of August had been successful. It marked the first time that South America has ever been chosen for the job and the news was received with great jubilation by the host country. I think it was a time, you know, because, uh, first of all, because when it uh, was applied some time ago, uh, I think Brazil was not prepared. And Brazil now is prepared, it's the, the, the one of the, the, the eight economy in the world. You know? And then the other thing is, after you have a lot of Olympics games in the United States, you know, uh, in Europe and, and in Central America, I think there are a moment to have the Olympics game in South America. And then the Brazil are prepared for that, and Rio de Janeiro is in good time to prepare for that, no okay. doubt. The Olympics will further Pelé's campaign to introduce kids in Brazil to sport. In the meantime, he will no doubt continue to plow his energy into the many great causes he supports, such as the children's charity UNICEF. He's also become deeply involved in the FIFA campaign to protect the world's water sources. Since retiring as a player, the king of football has been busier than ever, which may account for the fact that it took him almost 30 years to put his incredible rags to riches story down on paper. Finally, in May 2006, Brazil's most famous export flew to England to launch his autobiography simply titled Pelé. At London's Virgin Megastore, he was met by hundreds of adoring fans who were treated to a book signing with a difference. Not only did they receive a personalized copy of Pelé's book, they also got a taste of Brazil with some exotic samba dancing. As he signed autographs and posed for photos, Pelé was humbled by the milestone occasion. Yeah, this is a gift for God because the young kids, they are here. They want to know about Pelé, they want to know of the life about Pelé. Then I leave to them, you know, some uh, experience of my life. This is, this is what I can do, give it back to them, everything who I get from the, those beautiful people. Despite the fame and fortune his many talents have brought him, 
Pelé has always taken time out to give back to his fans. At the ready with a wave and smile, he's always glad to sign an autograph or pose for a photo, and has never let his status as a football legend go to his head. Since beginning his career over half a century ago, he has signed hundreds of thousands of balls, shirts and photographs. It's this dedication to his faithful supporters that has seen his fan base continue to grow around the globe. It has also inspired many young footballers to follow their dreams. Never forgetting his humble roots, Pelé's generosity sets a great example for many modern-day footballers who often seem to care more about their bank balance than their supporters, and perhaps even the game itself. Because today the players, uh, the young players, they sing too much in the morning. They forget about the heart. You see, you get the player today. They, they is announced in, in Manchester United or in, in, in any team in Real Madrid or Milan. He kills, he kills the shot. Next day he go to the other team. He kills the shot. You know, this uh, I think is, is uh, something we will have to pay attention for the new generation. But. I think football always will be the biggest family in the world, no doubt. Pelé's unwavering commitment to that family has been rewarded with all kinds of different honours. In April 2002, an exhibition in Rio de Janeiro celebrated the life of the Brazilian football legend. Titled Pelé, the King's Art, the exhibition contained over 500 items from Brazil, New York and Paris. One of the show's feature items was a display of Pelé's football cleats preserved in gold. At its opening, former player and manager Mario Zagallo tried to sum up Pelé's contribution to the game. In fact, Pelé represented everything in soccer because of what he has done on the pitch. Mario Zagallo played with Pelé in the 1958 and 1962 World Cups and served as manager when his former teammate led Brazil to the third world title in 1970. The exhibition also included a shoeshine box made from fish skeletons. I think that from the shoeshine box to now, God gave me this opportunity to be an example for children. From there, we can be a Pelé and we'll have many Pelés, if it's God's will, here in Brazil. Six years later, another exhibition in Rio brought together exclusive photos, objects and videos from Pelé's personal collection many of which had never been publicly shown. The most wonderful thing in this museum is that we now have everything registered. When we tried to find out about the players of the past, like my father wanted to know, we didn't have any registers. Here we will have everything registered, and this is the most important thing we will leave to the upcoming generations. The same year brought the announcement that Pelé was to be honoured with a more permanent monument to his stellar career. In March, legendary Brazilian architect Oscar Niemeyer confirmed he would be designing a $9 million Pelé museum in Santos. The project consists of a concrete soccer ball with a 10-metre diameter connected to the figure. In essence, it's a monument, a large monument for sports. He's a great Brazilian. For Pele, the announcement was the culmination of a decade-long dream. God gave me the gift of playing soccer, and to him, architecture. Brazil will end up winning with this because we're always promoting Brazil. The museum will make a fitting tribute to one of the most awarded players in the history of the game, whose honours include being named Athlete of the Century in 1981 and 1999. But perhaps two of his greatest accolades were to be recognised as the FIFA player of the 20th century and to be voted the century's top personality. People are valued for what they did. So nobody was world champion at 17 years old, only Pelé. Nobody was three times world champion, apart from Pelé. Nobody reached a career record of 1,283 goals scored, only Pelé. So the next to appear would have to break all these records. Then it would be possible to see a new Pelé. But in the end, only God knows. In March 2004, a 
As part of FIFA's centennial commemorations, football's governing body decided that no one was more qualified than Pele to compile a list of the greatest living footballers. In between all of his other commitments, Pelé has also had to find the time to devote to his family life. Back in 1966, he married his first wife, Rosemary, with whom he had three children, Kelly Christina, Edson, also known as Adinho, and Jennifer. He and Rosemary divorced in 1978, and Pelé went on to marry psychologist and gospel singer Assyria Limos Seixas in April 1994. With the help of fertility treatments, Assyria gave birth to twins Joshua and Celeste in September 1996. Since retiring from football, he has also tried his hand at acting and has made more than 40 appearances as himself in numerous TV shows, films and documentaries. He has also acted in films like 1981's Escape to Victory, a movie about Allied prisoners of war, He's also appeared in Hot Shot and A Minor Miracle, as well as many Brazilian productions. But 2004 saw the release of the first film to be devoted to his own talents. Entitled Pele Eterno, the documentary charted the making and maintaining of a legend. My, my film, you know, I, I am very, very glad and I thank all the you know, the, the, the crew, all the team who work on that, because it was five years to put all together. I have a proof for the youngs, for the new generation. Then my grandsons, when they grow, if they want to see something about uh, my life, I have the tape to show them the goals, everything. Mm -hmm. This the reason I call the Bible of Pele. Directed by Anibal Masseni, the documentary tells the life of the player through the eyes of his family and former teammates. It includes historic footage of some of the 1,283 goals Pele scored throughout the course of his 22-year career. It's a film who everyone can see, you know, because it's a film for sport, for the family who have emotion, you know. You have a lot of uh, material to, to produce a film. And I don't know why until now they didn't discover that. <laughs> but now, for example, my life, you know, I am very proud to be here in Cannes because uh, this is to talk about my life. It is a film about my life. The film introduced him to a new generation of fans, allowing Pele to pass on an important message. I think this message for the youngsters, you know, for the new generation, is the, the message of the, the winner, the, 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 uh, the self-confidence, mm -hmm. you know? Because uh, a lot of mothers, a lot of uh, ladies, you know, when they see the film, they say, oh, this film will have a message for my son. It's not only football, you know? They, they, they have a lot of, uh, you know, emotion in the film about my family, you know. I think this is, is important. The film and its message are all part of the rich legacy that the King of Football will leave to the game that made him an international superstar way back in the 1950s. With three World Cups and more than 1,200 goals to his name, Pelé is without doubt Brazil's greatest ever footballer and perhaps the best the world has ever seen. For many, his brilliance on the pitch and his generosity away from it will never be surpassed. Mm -hmm.